Hi there. Today I'm going to be showing you the beautiful Benina 1008. Now this is the only solid manual Benina sewing machine that is made now. Um, we have been selling these for many, many years, probably 30 odd years. Um, just such a wonderful machine. So I'm just going to run through the real basics of how to use this machine for you today. So the first thing is um, the power lead and the foot control have um, one connection here and it just goes into the side of your machine. When you turn the machine on at the side, there is a knob here that will turn the machine on but if you turn it all the way around it will also turn your light on. So now you have got a wonderful light here by your machine. When you do receive your machine, it will be all threaded up with new thread and it will be all tested and have a little test sample. However, I'm going to show you how you do it all from scratch and how you do your test sample for you so you can practice your new machine. So the first thing is we are wanting to wind a bobbin. So you get these little bobbins. Now do be careful buying bobbins that aren't banana bobbins as um, they'll probably be made in China. Um, these banana bobbins, if you spell it out from the first hole, it will spell the word banana. So B-E-R-N-I-N-A, and you know that amount of holes is only a banana bobbin. Um, it has a little grippy piece inside here for the thread. So what you do is you just put your reel of thread on the top. Yeah, I normally have it up that way with the thread coming off the back. And you come all the way to this little mark here and it's got a little tension d disc that the thread goes around and there's a little arrow on top to show you which way it goes. Probably if I put my glasses on I can see. So I'm following the way the arrow goes so it goes in front and around. Then it can go either, you can do two things, you can either go around about four or five times or if you want to you can just thread this up through the hole and push this across either way. There is a little cutter here to cut the thread. So on this machine, when I wind a bobbin, I simply hold the balance wheel and I pull the middle piece only, the middle piece only towards me and it stops my needle from going up and down. So now when I put my foot control down, it will just wind my bobbin. If I had this tight, and I can cut that thread by the way, if I had that on tight, my needle would go up and down. I've taken my needle out. But I don't want it to do that, so I'm just pulling the middle O only, holding the outer, and now I can wind a bobbin. Alright. Um, you have two thread stands if you need to do twin needling. And the little rubber caps, if you just pull it up, whoop, the little rubber cap comes off. We just put that on there to hold it down. Here we are. Nice and easy. So I'll wind a bit of thread on here. You can wind it till it's full if you like. I'll just put about half. And then you click it back and that releases your bobbin. Then you lift it up and you put it behind it and pull it and it will cut the thread. Very, very good. Now inside here is where your bobbin case goes. And this is what it looks like in the inside. And you release it by lifting this little lever here and pulling your bobbin out. Okay? Now in here, while we're in here, I'm going to show you how this all pulls apart. You flip, there's a little lever here and you just click it. You pull this down and you can pull all the inside of your machine out. So if you do ever get jammed at home, if you pull that out, take your top thread out, it will release everything and then you can make sure if there's fabric jammed under there or thread jammed under there and you can pull it all out. When you do need to maintain your machine, you can also clean it out and put one drop of oil on this part here that's going all the way around. And then just dab it with a cloth on each end and that will be all the oiling you need to do on your machine. To put this back, it is like a half moon. So if you turn your balance wheel, I'll tighten it back up again. If you turn your balance wheel so it's also like a half moon, this will just sit beside it. So you just sit it in beside it and then you close this and make sure this bottom part clips in behind this little bar. So there's the bar and you can hear it click in. So that's that done. 
Now when you're going to put your bobbin in your bobbin case, you always have your thread off to the left hand side. Here's your bobbin case. And you just put your bobbin in. And you'll see if I turn it, there's a little gap for you to put the thread. So the thread goes in there. I'll turn this around. You bring the thread up and it just clips behind that little bar. Okay? Then when you put your bobbin in, your bobbin case, you can hold that lever and you just put it in. And there's only one place it can go. There's a lovely cutout and you'll hear it click. And you know your bobbin's in right. You can just put your thread out the door and close the door. Okay? Now your foot lifter is at the back of your machine to lift your foot up and down. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to put a new needle in. Just to show you, you'll, already, you'll always have a new needle in there. But you get a pack of needles. Oh, there's another thing I will tell you is the system of the needles you want to buy is 130705H. And that's a standard sewing needle. So Schmitz and Benina are made in the same factory. So sometimes you'll see Benina on here and sometimes you'll see Smitch. So I'm just going to pop that back in there. It's got a little home. And you've got this wonderful, wonderful screwdriver that fits in the side of your needle bar clamp here. There's a little bar in there and it fits in nice and tidy. So all the needles, you need to make sure there's a flat piece and a round piece at the front, a half round. You put flat to the back. So put it up as high as it can go and just hold it. And then with your needle bar, very gently tighten your needle. Do not over tighten it. On the end of your screwdriver, you have a little funny rubber end. And this actually takes your bulbs in and out. No, this one takes your bulbs in and out on this machine. <laughs> I'll see which machine I had. On the uh, some other machines, their bulbs are only that little. Your bulb is this big. So this is for taking your light bulb out. So it fits up underneath the light bulb and you turn it. It's a bayonet and you pull it out. I won't pull it out now because the machine's on. But that's what that one's for. My apologies for that. Righty-ho. So now we've got our bobbin in we're going to thread our top thread. So to thread our thread, we just hold our thread here. Make sure your foot is up. Now when your foot's up, these tensions are open. So we want our foot up so our thread goes in our tensions. We come down, we go straight down, we go around, we go up and around our take-up lever, which is this here. So the take-up lever can be up, or it could be down in there. We don't want it down in there because we wouldn't be able to thread it. So we always want to make sure our take-up lever is at the highest position so we can make sure our thread goes in it. Then we go behind the needle bar here and we thread our machine front to back. Now Benina have been very, very clever and they've put a white bar on the uh, marking on the front of our foot. So when we put our foot down, and we cut our thread and I cut it on an angle, when we go to thread it, we can see easily where to thread it because it reflects on the white bar. Okay, so you thread from front to back and then you take your thread out to the side. Now, if you lift your foot up, there is a little slit on the side of the foot and the thread fits in. If you turn your balance wheel one rotation, you will pop up your bobbin thread and you can pull them both to the side to start sewing. You've also got a wonderful thread cutter on the side. And if you do use that there, that will stop your needle from unthreading when you start to sew. So now we're all ready to start to sew. Um, we have got lots of stitches on our machine, but we have it set on the first one, which is straight sew zigzag. This dial on the outside is the zigzag dial and we can go from zero zigzag width to five zigzag width. The middle dial is a needle position. So if you have a look at my needle position here, 
on my foot, if I move, I'll go this hand, if I move my needle position, my whole needle bar moves. So there it is centre, half right and right. Half right, centre, half left and left. And I'll show you that when I sew it. This dial here we do not touch unless we're doing a buttonhole. And this is your stitch, stitch dial. So this is your stitch length. So the longer your stitch length, the longer, the higher the number. Okay? This dial down here, you have two lots of stitches on your machine. You have green stitches, which are your standard stitches. And you have red stitches, which are your triple stitches. So green is this side. If I turn the outer, it will click and it will now do the red stitches. I'm going back to green. This last dial here, these are your feed dogs. So these little things that feed your fabric forwards and backwards are called feed dogs. If you flip them down, they disappear. And you would only do that if you want to darn or do freehand quilting. So I'm going to flip them back up, but you'll notice they do not pop back up. They only come back up when you do one full rotation of your balance wheel or you start sewing. So it's something to point out because I've had many phone calls about that. Okay, now to start sewing, all we do is put our foot down. We've got our two threads out to the side. We've got our stitch um, selected on straight sewing. Zero, that's on zero. And this one I'm going to put down to two and a half, which is standard sewing. Now if I want to reverse, so I'm going to start sewing. If I want to reverse, I lift this lever up. And that reverses my lever and then I put it back down. So sewing and reverse. Sewing and reverse. It's pretty easy. Now if I want to change a width or a stitch or anything like that, I need to turn my balance wheel so my needle is out of the work. So when I change my needle position, I'm not going to break a needle. Okay? So if my needle had been down, the whole needle would have moved across and I could potentially break it. So now I've moved it to left needle position. I've got the needle up. I'm moving it half left. The needle isn't quite up, so I'm going to make it go up. I go full straight sewing. Needle up and I'll go full right. And reverse. Now I'm going to turn it so my needle is up. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to pull my thread out and I'm going to cut my threads. Now I'm going to hold it here so you can see. I did forward and reverse stitching. And then I moved my needle position to the left. Half left, centre and full right. So those are your needle positions. So I'm going to put that back to the centre. And now I'm going to show you zigzag. So you don't have to adjust anything here to do a zigzag. All you have to do to adjust your zigzag is to put a width on. So I'm going to go to two width and I'm going to go to two length. So this little mark goes to the number and this little mark goes to the number. So two width and two length. And I can adjust this part while I'm sewing because I've still got my straight stitch needle on. So I can go my width while I'm sewing and I can adjust my length while I'm sewing but I can't adjudge, adjust my needle position. All right, so I'm gonna go down to three and to three, and I can reverse. So now I will show you, turn your balance wheel so it's at the highest. Can you see it's pulling all my thread from my loop underneath so I get just one thread. So that's why you need to turn your balance wheel. I'll show you that again in a minute. So now you can see I've gone from a narrow zigzag to a wider zigzag to a very wide zigzag. Narrow zigzag, narrow zigzag, and I've reversed. Now you probably will notice how this is starting to pucker. I've gone to a very, very wide zigzag. Now watch what happens if I put a bit of tear away behind there. So this is called tear away. Well, actually, this one's called tear away. And when I put a bit of... Uh, something to make it firmer it will make my stitch even better because I've put a bit of body behind it 
So you could either use a material weight, which tears away afterwards, or an iron-on interfacing. So now when I sew a nice wide um, stitch, I get a perfect stitch. And I'm just guiding it down, just so I can show you. Needle up to the highest position, lift my foot, and cut my thread. Now look how perfect my stitch is. So sometimes we use this sort of product to give a perfect stitch if we're doing an embellishment on a garment. Okay? Now, I'll just leave this under here actually. Right, so now I'm going to show you some of the other stitches. So one of the stitches I use probably my most favourite stitch and I use it for mending and I use it for fancy stitches is stitch number seven. Now I'm just going to tilt the machine so you can see it and how you use this little bar here, you bring it across, you select your stitch and you let it go. So you bring it across, you select your stitch and you let it go. So I'm going up to stitch number seven. I'm going to leave it on five width and I'm going to bring it up to one and a half length. Uh, one length, beg your pardon. So this is called the mending stitch or the running zigzag. And I do use it a lot. Before I finish, I'm going to show you Another stitch that I use a lot, and it's stitch number four, and I use it on four width, and I use it on one length, and then I'm going to tell you what I use them for. Because these are the two stitches I probably use the most. So this one here is the running zigzag stitch. And as I said, I use that a lot and I use it for mending and I put the stitch length on about half and make it very, very close. This one here I use for sewing on my elastic. Now the reason I use this is because it does not do a zigzag with points that can weaken for elastic. It does two stitches across, it jumps right over, it does two stitches, it jumps back and do, does two stitches and jumps forward. And it just means that you're not um, puncturing the elastic as much okay now the next one I want to show you which is really important is your overlock stitch now in your machine here in your um, your box of goodies you get this and you think well why am I given a piece of a foot because you get given one solid foot for all your basic sewing and this one you can clip all your other pieces that you want, that you need for other stitches. So this is my overlock stitch foot. And all I do is I push that down and it's connected and made a foot. To release it, I push the button. Okay? So to connect it, all I do is push it down and now I've got my overlock stitch. Your foot, uh, overlock foot. Your machine will tell you what foot to put on for what stitch. So this is foot number two. So now I want to take this off. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to turn it round. And I'm just going to show you how you take the foot off. So there's a little bar here. I'm lifting up the bar and I'm taking the foot off. And it pulls down. It's never come off before. By the way, you have a little screw on the back of your feet. Every so often tighten those because they are for a quilting guide. So you can either take the screws off or just keep them tight because sometimes they fall, fall out. And you can buy a quilting guide that goes on the back of the foot. Right, I'm going to put my other foot on so it looks the same but it has clip-on feet and it goes underneath the bar and you push this little arm down and it connects it. And now I've got an overlock foot on. So you've got two overlocking stitches on this machine. You have a single and a double overlock. I might just take that off. Oh, here we are. I've got a piece ready. So I'm going to overlock my um, raw edges together. So I'm going to go, your book will tell you, four width, right needle position, and one and a half length. The only reason I... Oh, stitch number. On this one, it's stitch number three. <laughs> nope. Is stitch number six. They've both got the same picture. 
Right, we're away. So stitch number six. Actually, I think I'll take it up. I think I was on two. So about one and a half. Four with the right knee position, but your machine will tell you. And what it does is it stitches along, and every so every fifth stitch, it jumps over and does a zigzag. But on this machine, you've also got a double overlock for thicker three. So this one's called single overlock. Now, I want to go to the triple stitches, and double overlock is stitch number 12, and all I do is I go red, 12. And now, it's going to go forward and reverse, and it's going to do a double overlock. So I'll show you the result. Quite different. And if you want to know when you use a double overlock, you would use it for sweatshirting, um, or heavy fabric like this knit I've got beside me. Now when you're finished, it's really important with this foot to lift your foot up and pull it to the back. Don't pull it to the side because there's a bar under the foot. Pull it to the back and turn your balance wheel, lift your foot up and then clip it off. So I'm going to show you underneath that foot. Can you see the bar? Um, that way. The little bar that's going through the foot, that is why you don't want to pull it to the side. Okay? And this is the single overlock. There's the single overlock here, and that's the double overlock. So the double overlock stitches both sides. Very good. So this is on lightweight fabric, and this would be on heavyweight fabric. Okay? The other stitch I'm going to just show you quickly is the buttonhole. So all your stitches you can select here. Um, but the buttonhole you leave on the normal straight so zigzag and there's a picture of a buttonhole. Now I don't need to do anything to this machine. I just have it on my four width and I bring this right up to about a half length. But watch what happens when I turn this dial. Can you see it changed my stitch length? You watch, I made my stitch width, watch this again, and my needle position. Every time you change to a different number, the machine automatically changes everything. It's brilliant. So I've just got this on a very close length here, and I'm going to open up my bobbin case area. I'm going to take my bobbin case out, and on your bobbin case, you've got a little bar with a hole in it, and I'm going to thread my thread through. I need to cut it on an angle so I can thread it. I'm going to thread my thread through this bar from the inside to the outside like that. And I'm going to pull it and I'm going to put my bobbin case back in. Click. All right. Now I'm going to change my foot. Okay. So I'm going to change the base of my foot. I'm going to take that one off. And I'm going to put my buttonhole foot on. And this is what the buttonhole foot looks like. And it's foot number three. So I'm going to turn it to stitch number one. Remembering I've, oh, back to green. And I'm on a very small stitch length because I want it nice and tight. So with this, I'm just going to get a little pen. And I'm going to mark where the size of my buttonhole. That's not a pen. Um, I'm going to get a pen, hopefully. One moment, please. No, my kingdom for a pen. I'm going to make a length. It's all right. I've got about 50,000 in here, but not one in front of me. So I'll just pretend I've put a length here and a length here. That's not like me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is um, select stitch number one. And I'm just going to sew down. Now, what happens is... The first one does your bar on the left hand side. So I'm sewing down to my length of my buttonhole and I'm turning this to number two. Number two does a bar tack across the bottom. Oh, I fib. Number two on this machine feeds back to the beginning. Gosh, I've done so many videos, every single one's different. Needle up. Now number three does a bar tack across the end. Do about six. Needle up. Bar tack, I mean, onto stitch number three. 
and it feeds on the right hand side bead. When you get to the bottom, you're going to stop with the needle up. Number five does a bar tack across the bottom. Again, about six. Make sure the needle's up. Number six locks off and stitches just up the side and do about four of those. Then you go back to zero. Then for your next buttonhole, you go to number one and you start again. So let me just show you. There is your buttonhole. So number one comes down, number two goes back, number three does the bar, number four does a bead on the right, number five does a bar on the bottom, and number six goes up the side. Now let me show you what happens when I do a buttonhole on a fabric with stabilizer behind it. So when you do buttonholes, you should always have stabilizer either iron-on interfacing or tear away. The reason being you get a better quality buttonhole. So I'm going to do the first bead down the side. I'm going to make sure my needle's up. I'm going to go to stitch number two and this machine goes backwards first. Stop at the beginning. Needle up. Stitch number three, bar tack across about six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go on to stitch number four, and I'm doing the right hand bead. Needle up, stitch number five, bar tack across the bottom, and then stitch number six locks off and stitches up the side. Brilliant. And there you have a beautiful buttonhole, but look how much nicer it is because I got stabilizer behind there. Now I'm just going to quickly show you one more thing, and that is how to cut your buttonhole. We get a lot of people make mistakes when they first learn. When you cut a buttonhole, you get these wonderful um, Benina quick unpicks. You put the, the pointy end into the end of your buttonhole, and you go to the center of your buttonhole. Turn your work around, start at the end of your buttonhole, and you cut it back to where you ended the last one. Now what that does is it stops you from cutting all the way across your buttonhole. The other way you could do it is you could put a pin at the end of your buttonhole, and you could start cutting here, and you could cut all the way to there knowing you can't go past your pin. So that's another way you can cut your buttonhole. This will never fray, okay? But you can see the difference between having stabilizer and having no stabilizer. Okay, Stabil stabilizer behind a buttonhole is imperative. All right, so that is how you use your new machine and that is just a little bit of information to get you started. So remember, this is your stitch width, this is your needle position, this is your button holder, this is your stitch length, this is from changing from your green stitches to your red stitches, and this one drops your feed dogs down and back up, but they will not come up till you do one rotation. This is your stitch selection. Oh, and this one is your tension dial. It should always have red line to red line there for perfect tension, okay? If you want to have a tighter tension, even for your ordinary sewing, then thread the eye of the needle here, the eye of the bobbin case. But for normal sewing, you normally do not thread the eye. It only is for when you want a tighter stitch, and that is for buttonholes, okay? So I hope that gets you started on your new machine. You all know that you can come in for any free lessons at work, but I thought while it's locked down, I'll do some demos for you so you can get started, and I hope you enjoy your new Benina 1008. Have a good day.